Yellowstone supervolcano, its mushy past. This is from Caldera Chronicles of the USGS. Latest update, March 4th. What does a magma chamber look like? Well, at first thought, many of us would imagine a large cavern in the crust filled with molten rock. While this has been a traditional model for a number of decades, geophysical imaging using seismic waves to look for areas of increased heat and melt, which result in slower seismic wave speeds, other region below the volcano systems have found new evidence for this style of magma storage. As more data became available for geochemical and geophysical studies, our idea of what a magma chamber looks like has continued to evolve. And by understanding what a magma system looks like prior to an eruption, we can start to understand how volcanic reservoirs are built and sustained over time. This information can be then used to help us monitor and prepare for future eruptions. And Yellowstone's Mushy Pass, this is from the updated Caldera Chronicles, March 4th. Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles is a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And this week's contribution is from Madison Myers, Assistant Professor of Igneous Processes at Montana State University, and Megan Selfeld, PhD student at Montana State University. So what does a magma chamber look like? At first thought, many of us would imagine a large cavern filled with molten rock, and this has been the traditional model. But geophysical imaging using seismic waves look for areas where heat and melt are increasing. And that results in a slower seismic wave speed of the regions below the volcanic system that have been uh, never found evidence of this style of magma storage. And as more data becomes available from geochemical, geophysical studies, the idea of what a magma chamber looks like continues to evolve. Understanding what a magma system looks like prior to an eruption can now lead us to start to understand how volcanic reservoirs are built and sustained over time. And information can then be used to help us monitor and prepare for future eruptions. At a depth of several miles, many kilometers down, magma has two main components, solid crystals and liquid melt. There may also be some gas, but this is typically minor. How these components are distributed can drastically change their stability in the crust, as well as what that geophysical image might look like. Many studies have proposed that magma is stored as a mush zone, a large semi-rigid region that is composed of about 50 to 70 percent crystals and with smaller amounts of melt distributed within this crystalline framework. Researchers have shown that magma stored in these melt pockets within the mushier framework can merge over the decades to centuries prior to being erupted presumably from a central vent. In other cases, melt bodies may not fully merge, as, uh, merge at depth and instead could emerge from multiple vents. This might explain why large bodies of melt have never been imaged, even though large eruptions have obviously occurred at places like Yellowstone. This knowledge has important implications for how we monitor volcanic systems, especially when interpreting geophysical data, since it redefines what we might consider an active or eruptive magma reservoir. And in addition, this new model of magma stored as a network of smaller, disconnected pockets of melt, rather than a giant pocket of molten rock, is important for understanding how large volumes of magma can be stored stably in the crust for long periods of time. One such example for these isolated melt pockets comes from the Huckleberry Ridge eruption. It was the largest of Yellowstone's three caldera forming events. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption occurred about 2.08 million years ago, and it produced 2,500 square kilometers of material. And for comparison, Mount St. Helens produced only one square kilometer. 
So that eruption, Huckleberry Ridge was two and a half thousand times bigger. And it dispersed ash that probably touched most of the United States in one way or another. Recent research has found subtle variations in the composition of glass, which is basically frozen magma, and minerals produced during the earliest part of the eruption that suggests the magma was stored as four separate melt bodies, four bodies of magma. Because there is no evidence that these melt pockets mixed the, with each other, it's inferred that there were several active vents, each erupting magma from different melt pockets instead of a single central vent. After about 50 square kilometers of material had been erupted, the magma reservoir became under-pressurized, meaning it was no longer able to support the weight of the overlying crust. So at this point, caldera collapsed, the roof of the magma system falling inward began. So the caldera, caldera began to collapse, similar to a piston cylinder dropping down and pushing the remainder of the melt out of the crust. During this phase, not just four, but eight different melt pockets were tapped from vents around the perimeter of the caldera. Overall, this model of complex magma storage, rather than one single magma chamber, can explain how large volcanic systems are built in areas without one massive magma reservoir. Fortunately, seismic surveys of the Yellowstone magma system do not show any evidence of substantial melt pockets. In fact, geophysical imaging shows that the mush zone consists of only 5 to 15 percent melt, which indicates that a large eruption is not likely to happen anytime soon. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.